having classic flashbacks. The only place I was comfortable was in the wilderness. So I camped out. And all of my senses were externalized to watching, you know, the bushes for a twitch or a brown patch of fur come out of the meadow or any sound or the crack of a stick. And the flashbacks seemed to know that. They couldn't go on. They couldn't intrude upon a day because you're living with this great animal that, it, that demands all your attention. I was determined from then on that I was gonna watch him and do what I could for him. Those bears had saved my life. I could see the dwindling. I knew they needed help. With the gift of my friend's Rolex camera, I went out and started full-time filming grizzly bears, hoping to get a, a collection of film that would advertise their plight. I really thought I was getting the last record, so it became kind of an honorable, sacred mission. And that footage got me on national media, the Today Show, Good Morning America, the American Sportsman. I had, I had a story to tell. It's, it's very risky to go on without a little piece of that original habitat from which we spring. All our humanity, all our, all our intelligence, our imagination, the human mind itself sprang from such a community. And the bear represents that, and I think that's why we ought to keep a few of them around. The wilderness, it's under threat, and we have to fight for all we're worth. I wasn't just out there looking at this other animal, but there was things that could pass between us, and they did. The potentials for having different kinds of relationships with wild animals like grizzlies are really unlimited. We just never give them a chance. We need this wildness more than we will ever know because it's inside of us and we need whatever brings it out of us because it's our best quality.